Good morning. It's uh, so good that uh, today for the first time after all these months that we've been able to come together as one church, our English church, our English congregation. And uh, I believe that you are being uh, sustained and strengthened by the grace of God, you and your family. And uh, I want to encourage us to continue to look to the Lord. i uh, grateful for the use of technology. I'm reminded of how uh, when the Romans built their roads uh, for this for the purpose of trade and commerce and for their military expansion. Uh, those are the very roads that Paul and the other apostles used in order to reach to uh, cities and, and nations to preach the gospel and to make disciples. Uh, let's uh, have the same approach. Uh, whatever um, men uh, discover, invent, make, let us use all of that. Let us employ all of that uh, to preach the gospel and to make disciples. I'm reminded of also what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians. He says, I may be in chains, but the word of God is not in chains. The word of God is all powerful and uh, the word of God will continue to go forth. All it requires is our faithful obedience to the mission that God has called us to and trusted us with. This morning, I want to share with you uh, from the book of Psalms, Psalms 67, a uh, beautiful psalm, and it speaks about clearly God's purpose uh, for the nations, God's purpose for all peoples. I'm uh, going to request us to read it together. So if you please join me in opening your Bibles to Psalms 67, we're going to read through the entire psalm, verses 1 to verse uh, 7. And then I will just try to highlight what I believe are some important truths for us as God's people and bring this to a prayerful conclusion for us this morning. Psalm 67, God be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah, that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you will judge the peoples with uprightness and guide the nations on the earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. God blesses us that all the ends of the earth may fear him. Beautiful, uh, very clear, very powerful. But let's try to summarize and bring out uh, truth after truth for us to understand and for us to progress ahead in the mission that God has for us. The first thing, God's purpose is to be praised in all the nations. I say it again, God's purpose is to be praised, that he would be praised in all the nations. We must know this, beloved, that God is not just the God of Israel. He's not just the God of you and me. He's the God of all peoples. He has created every man, woman, child on the face of the earth who has ever lived, is living, and will ever live. He's the God of all the peoples. He's the Lord over all the nations. He's in charge. He's in control. And as the book of Revelation says, that therefore he's worthy to receive all glory and all honor from all that he has created, from all that he has made. So this psalm teaches us that God's purpose, what is God's purpose? Is that he would be known, he would be praised, he would be enjoyed and feared among all the nations. And as we look at the verses, it states that very clearly. Verse 2 tells us that thy way may be known on the earth. Verse 3 tells us, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all, all, not some, not even the majority, let all the peoples praise you. Verse 4 says that God is to be enjoyed. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. God's will is not the oppression of nations. God's will is not, is not the destruction of nations and peoples. God's will is that the nations would be glad and sing for joy. And verse 7 tells us that all the ends of the earth may fear him. So here's what it says. The first thing, he's to be known. He's to be praised. He's to be enjoyed. God's not boring. God's enjoyable, supremely enjoyable. And he's to be feared. 
is to be held in awe and reverence by all peoples. And this is the first point that God is jealous, beloved, to be known and praised and enjoyed and feared. And he's displeased when people are ignorant of him or disrespectful of him or, or appear to be bored about him or unduly casual about him. People of all nations will find their supreme joy, security and rest not in a good economy, not in a good marriage if it exists, not in financial increases, not within safe political borders, but in God. And to be clearer, they will find their joy in acknowledging and worshipping this true, awesome God who created them, who alone is worthy of all our worship, glory and honor. And verse 2 tells us clearly that this will happen when they will receive his salvation. So that's the first thing, that God's purpose is that he is to be praised in all the nations. This, this, this psalm makes it clear. This is his purpose. The second thing is that God wants people to know what kind of a God he is. You know, in this 21st century, we're living in an absolutely confused world. People have learned in their fallenness, in their depravity, to be confused more probably than any other generation that has ever lived on the face of the earth. We have learned the art of being confused and lost and even being proud and boastful about it. But God wants people to know what kind of a God he is. He's not the gods like the gods that we see around us. God wants people to know that he is a God of justice. He's a God of power. He's a God of grace. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a good God. Verse 4 talks about how God is a God of justice, that he will judge people with uprightness. And verse 4 also tells us that he will guide the nations on the earth. And verse 1 tells us that God is gracious. And that's why the psalmist prays, be gracious to us and bless us. And so that means that God wants that people will know him subjectively with joy, with praise and fear, but also objectively as being the one and only true God and not and just like any other that we see around us. He's just, he's powerful, he's gracious. He's fearful. He's awesome. Psalm 67 tells us that God wants to be known for who he really is, his divine attributes that make him awesome, holy, just, so that our praise, our joy and fear are rooted in scriptural, personal, experiential, tangible reality and not in vain imaginations. And so God wills that he be known. So that, so that brings out two things till now in what we've seen in the Psalms. Number one, that God is to be praised in all the nations, in all the people. The second is that God would, God wants people to know what kind of a God he is. He wants them to praise him out of understanding. He wants them to worship him out of Knowing how awesome he is, how great he is, how powerful he is. The third thing is to bring the primary theme that brings the psalm, that weaves the psalm together. And this is the main point of Psalm 67. God blesses us, his people, so that the nations will be blessed. So what the psalmist is saying is that what is he going to do with all this truth that he's stating or he's writing about God's purpose and God's uh, character? He knows, the psalmist knows that God wills to be known and praised and enjoyed and feared for who he really is. So his response is that, is to pray that God would bless, in specific in the psalm, God would bless Israel in such a way that God really would be known among the nations. In other words, the main point of the psalm is the link between verse 1 and verse 2, found in the word 
that. So if you could just look at that psalm, he prays, God, be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that, that thy way may be known on the earth, thy salvation among all the nations. So the point we need to stress, and I want to stress uh, right now, is that God blesses his people for the sake of the nations. I want to say it again, and I want to make it very clear. And my confidence and authority of saying this is God's word. It's very clear, beloved, that every time you and I pray that God bless me, God answer my prayers. Here is the purpose of it. God blesses his people for the sake of the nations. Now that, that takes us um, to help us understand this better into the fourth thing that I want to say. And that is, what is God's point throughout history? And um, for lack of time, I will not be able to elaborate this passage after passage. But here's, here's the thing I want to say. That God's purpose in every generation till now, until he returns, till the Lord returns again, our Lord Jesus Christ is that he has been redeeming, he's been calling and redeeming a people unto himself in every generation. And, and this was the foundational truth that he, that he spoke to Abraham when he called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees. And this is what God told Abraham in recording in Genesis 12, 2 to 3. I will make you a great nation. Abraham, I will bless you. But he didn't end it there. He said, I make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. Great. But he didn't end there. He went further and said, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And it was a theme that, that every other servant of God, every other prophet that was sent by God, you know, echoed that again repeatedly. Israel, you don't exist for yourself. You don't just exist to indulge in self-indulge in the blessings that God has given you. Israel, yes, you are the chosen of God. Yes, you are God's treasured people among all nations. But you have a purpose that is far beyond you. And that is that because God has always been the God of all peoples and the God of all nations, he wills that through you, he will bless all the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. And that's what is even recorded in Isaiah 49 verse 6. And this is almost exactly what the psalmist says in Psalm 67 verses 1 and 2. Only here, the psalmist turns that promise into a prayer. And that's what we should be doing with all the promises of God given in God's word. We should be turning promises into prayers. If God has said it, he will do it. God doesn't make casual statements. What God says, he does. And therefore, we have confidence in our prayers. Therefore, our prayer should be scriptural, not soulish, not self-centered. Our prayers should be scriptural in line with the purpose of God. When our prayers are in line with the purpose of God, we have confidence. We are praying on the basis of God's word. We are praying in line with God's purpose that God will bless us. God will answer our prayers because we have allowed him to captivate our hearts with his mission and his purpose. God, be gracious to us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us that thy way may be known on the earth, thy salvation among the people. God promises blessing to his people because he wants them to be a blessing to the nations. And this is not because God does not love us or he's just merely trying to use us. It's because he loves the nations and because he knows he knows that our joy in all that God is for us increases when it expands into the lives of others. Let me say it again. That our joy in all that God is for us increases when it expands into the lives of others. In other words, if you want to find greater, deeper, more joy in God, Work, work, do everything you can to help others find their supreme joy in God. 
and your joy and my joy will increase. So I want to uh, bring it to the last thing I want to say uh, before I conclude. One more point. So when will God most likely bless us? You've been praying. I've been praying. You know, we have expectations. And uh, there are things that we carry in our heart that we, we desire for ourselves or for our families. Uh, I also want to try and draw a line here. Not, and not everything that we desire is something that God's going to grant us. Let me make it very clear. Not everything. Some of it would be a clear no from God because it would be it would just be not in line with his character. It would not be in line with his purpose uh, for your life or your his purpose uh, uh, for his kingdom. And so it could just be selfish prayers. It could just be um, something that's meaningless. But when will God most likely bless us? And according to the psalm and according to what I understand is God's purpose uh, repeated all throughout the narrative of the Old Testament, even to the New Testament, it's very clear. God most likely will bless us when we step out to bless the nations. Absolutely clear. Now, there are many promises and blessings that God has given to his people in Scripture. But what is it? What is this blessing that God wants to take to the nations? What was the blessing that God wanted to uh, give to Abraham and through Abraham, through his descendants, to all the families of the earth. What is that blessing? What is it that God wants us to take to the nations? Very clear. The gospel. The gospel is the blessing that God wants us to take to the nations, to all people. So if God blesses his people for the sake of the nations, then God most likely is most likely to bless us when we are planning, longing, praying to bless the nations. I, I like the way John Piper, Pastor John Piper puts it, and he says this, if God wants his goods to get to the nations, then he will fill the truck that's driving towards the nations. He will bless the church that's pouring itself out to the unsaved, the unreached, the unengaged peoples, of the world. But please don't misunderstand. The blessing is not a payment for service rendered. It's not. You can, you and I never earn the blessings of God. It is because of only what Jesus has done that we are privileged and we are situated in the gospel to be blessed. But this blessing that we're talking about, this provision that will come from God, whatever it be, finances, resources, uh, relationships, everything that God will give us, his power, his anointing, it's power and joy for a mission to be accomplished. When we move towards the unreached people, when we, when we move towards the unsaved people, we're not earning God's blessings, beloved. We are leaping into the river of blessing that's already flowing into or towards the nations. So in conclusion, we have two truths in Psalm 67, verses 1 and 2 connected to each other. God blesses his people for the sake of the nations. God blesses his people for the sake of the nations. That's number one. But number two, God is most likely to bless us when we are planning and longing and praying to bless the nations and to make the nations glad in God. You know, beloved, uh, we're living in, and you've probably heard that so many times, it's almost like repeated so often, but we're really living in an unusual time. You know, it's not so often that the world is united in suffering. Uh, in this level or in, 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 a, in a sort of a, such a fearful situation of this pandemic. And we suddenly see that we are connected globally. You know, we connected the nations. Uh, what began in a, in, a, in a corner of China has spread through all the world. Almost the entire world has been battling this. And we don't, we don't clearly know the origin of what has happened, why this has happened. But we know this. We know that God is in charge and God can use any and everything to accomplish his purpose. No one and nothing can limit the power and the purpose of God. So, beloved, be encouraged. Be encouraged before you leave this earth, fulfill God's purpose. Use everything that God has given you right now. Don't wait to be, you know, say, God, if you give me a little bit more, then I will try to use that extra. No, use what you have. Use what you have. Use the time, the resources, the finances, the energy, the gifting the opportunities that you have in order to reach out to the peoples 
around you and even beyond you with the gospel. You know, I, I'm going to send the notes across uh, to us in just a few minutes after the service gets over. And in that, there are some questions that I would like you all to discuss in the live group um, uh, this week. Just take time to recap the message in just a f in a couple of minutes, but to go through these questions uh, that I have. Um, you know, I want to I want to say this to us. Um, you know, India is a fascinating nation, and you know, when we talk of God being the God of all nations. You know, this, this so uniquely applies to our nation. You know why? India has more than 2,000 ethnic groups. Let me just read out some facts. We have 2,000 ethnic groups in every major religion in the world represented. It's home to four major families of languages, Indo-European, Dravidian, Austroasiatic, and tibeto burman languages. India is ethnically, linguistically, culturally, genetically, and religiously one of the most diverse and complex nations in the world. Only the continent of Africa exceeds the linguistic, genetic, and cultural diversity of India. We occupy 2.8% of the world's land and support over 17.5% of the world's population. In 2001 census, 72% of the population live in 6,38,000 villages, out of which only 3 lakh have access to some kind of a church, villages, have some kind of access. Over 3 lakh have no access to any kind of church. The remaining 27, 27 or 28% live in more than 5,100 towns and over 380 uh, semi-urban and urban cities. Globally, 43% of the world's people groups are considered unreached with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's over 6,000 people groups, 1.7 billion people still live with little or no access to the gospel. Here, here is the unfortunate fact and the tragic fact that we must know as a people of God living in India. The majority of these precious people groups who are unreached and unengaged live in our nation. Live in our nation, Villa. And here's the amazing thing for us to give, give, so that I would give you hope. You know, in our church, we almost have 20 states uh, and, you know, probably even more language or ethnic groups represented. And beloved, here's the thing. If we begin to take small steps, but there would be significant steps in this direction. You know, let's believe God, that God will use our little community to do significant, powerful things yeah, for the gospel, for the glory of the name of Jesus, you know, in our nation. Let's believe that Utsa will be a gospel-centered, disciple-making, and a church-planting movement of the Holy Spirit. Can we believe for couples to go out of our church to unreached places, to unreached people and plant churches? Can we believe for individuals who are called by God would, be go, would go forth? And don't forget your precious loved ones, your oikos, your, your family members who have not yet received the gospel, your colleagues whom you, who you interact with day in and day out, your neighbors who live beside you, what are the steps you are taking to engage with them relationally and praying for them so that they would taste and see that the Lord is good and you would be in a position then to share the gospel with them in its clarity and its simplicity. Beloved, we don't have much time for two reasons. Number one, the Lord's coming is near. But the second, you don't know how much time you have on the earth. How long are you going to live? You only know how long you've lived. You don't know how long more you're going to live. How many more days you have on this earth? Make the most of it. Live for the purpose of God and step into glory with great joy and confidence that when you meet your Lord, he will say, well done, because you lived to bless the nations because that alone is his purpose. In just a few uh, moments, uh, Pastor Arun and Shirley will lead us in a time uh, of uh, remembering our Lord's sacrifice with the emblems. I uh, remind you to get your emblems ready. We're going to pray that and they're going to pray with you. And then pray a prayer of blessing. But right now, I just want to pray, close in prayer uh, as I come to the end of this word in line with what I have shared with you. Father God, I thank you, God, for your word that has again reminded us. And I believe that by your spirit, you've stirred our hearts from Psalm 67 to remind us that you are the Lord of all nations. The Holy One of Israel is the Lord of all nations. You're the God of all peoples. And I and your word says very clearly, God, that you 
Bless us so that your way may be known in all the earth. Your salvation among all peoples. That all the nations would be glad and rejoice in you. Lord, cause your face to shine upon us and bless us. Be gracious to us, not just for ourselves, so that we as your people would bless the nations. We would bless our loved ones, our friends, our colleagues, uh, our neighbors. Oh God, we would use every tool that you've given us. You would give us every resource you've given us. You would give us, we would use our finances. We would not be selfish and greedy. That would be foolishness, Lord, that we would hoard things or in our self-indulge. Lord, for that would be vanity, but help us to use all that we have. And as we fulfill our responsibilities as, as husbands and fathers and, and mothers and, and children, would help us to extend our hand, our prayers, and all that you have to bless the nations with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, make your face to shine upon us and be increasingly glorified in and through our lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a great week. Have a purpose filled, a purposeful week every day of your life now and till you're here on planet Earth. Over to you, Arun and Shirley. Uh, lead us in this time of the communion. Uh, the Lord bless you. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. God bless you.